Hello everyone and welcome to MATLAB and Simulink tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control engineering, signal processing, machine learning optimization, etc. In this particular video we explain how to deal with the problem of saturation in feedback control systems. More precisely, in this video tutorial you will learn how to deal with the problem of actuator saturation or better to say actuator limits in a feedback control system. You will learn that the combination of a PAD controller and saturation can have a devastating effect on the closed loop performance. You will learn that the combination of the integral control action and the actuator saturation can have a devastating effect on the response of the system. You will see that the overshoot of the system significantly increases and furthermore you can have system instabilities. To deal with this problem we will use the integral anti-windup filter and here is a basic configuration of the integral anti-windup system. Integral anti-windup controller is a simple feedback control loop given over here. It dramatically improves the closed loop performance of the system when we have actuator saturation. By the end of this video you will learn how to generate these important graphs. These graphs are very important since they compare the performance of the closed loop system when the integral anti-windup filter is implemented and when the integral anti-windup filter is not implemented. For example, the red line over here shows the output of the system when the integral anti-windup filter is not implemented. You can clearly see this huge overshoot that's direct consequence of the actuator limits or actuator saturations. On the other hand, to deal with this problem, we implemented the integral anti-windup filter and we clearly see the improvement of the performance. The blue line shows the response of the closed loop system when the integral anti-windup filter is implemented. Before I start with Simulink modeling, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create these free video tutorials and consequently I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start with modeling. First, let us open Simulink by typing in the command window Simulink. Then, let's click on blank model. First, we will simulate a closed loop system that only has a saturation block and a feedback control algorithm. For simplicity, we will be using a simple proportional integral or PI controller. First, we create our plant. I double clicked on my workspace and I will type an integrator and I will expand this block. This is our plant. Next, let us add the saturation block. And here I will edit the parameters of the saturation block. The upper limit will be 0.3 and the lower limit will be minus 0.3. Next, let us explain the saturation block. Let this be the input to the saturation block and let us denote this input by U. I will make this arrow more thicker. Let the output of the saturation block be denoted by UY. There is a static relationship between UY and U and it's a simple function that looks like this. On this axis we will denote or we will place values of U and on this axis we will place values of UY. Here I have 0.3 here I have minus 0.3 over here I have 0.3 
and over here I have minus 0 0.3. The saturation function looks like this. It has a slope of 45 degrees and this is a linear function between minus 0 0.3 to 0 0.3 and after 0 0.3 it's a constant function. Similarly for values smaller than 0 0.3 it's also a constant func function. Consequently if the value of input u is larger than 0 0.3 the, the output will stay at 0 0.3 similarly if the value of input is smaller than 0 0.3 consequently the output will be will stay at the value of minus 0 0.3 next let us create the PI or proportional integral controller first we will create an integrator and let us add an integrator gain. The integrator gain will stay at 1. Of course we can add this, this constant, we can add a larger or smaller value. However, since I want to make this video as short as possible, I will not tune the PID controller, or better to say the PI controller. Next we will add the proportional term. For proportional term we only need a gain. And I will edit this gain. This gain will be 0 0.5. Next, let us connect the appropriate blocks. Here I will just add the shadow arrow. Since I will need the sum over here. Here's my sum. And I will edit the sum block to look like this. Okay, now I will connect this part to the one port of the sum and this part will be to the other port, connected to the other port of the sum, the output will be connected to the saturation and the saturation will be connected to our plant. So far so good. Next we need to create the error term and we need to add the sum. Over here I will add the sum and I will edit this sum. Here I will have a negative sign since this port of the sum over here will accept the output of the system. This block will be connected to this gain and over here I will connect the proportional gain. This part here is the error. To create the error we need to connect the output of the plant to our minus port and over here we need to add a reference signal. For simplicity I will assume a step reference signal and I will keep the default value of the final value however I will keep the step time equal to zero. Next I will connect this part and this is it. This is our simple feedback control system with a saturation block and with the PI control algorithm. To simulate this system and to generate some graphs we will add the scope over here. And I will connect the output to the scope. So far so good. Let us simulate this system by clicking over here. And let us observe the output. I'll double click over here and here's the output. You can clearly see that the output corresponds to the red line shown at the beginning of this video. To gain more insights into the behavior of the system we will add two more graphs. First we will plot this signal then we will plot this signal. Let us add an additional scope and let us expand this block, connect this block to the output of our saturation and let us run the simulation again. Let's double click on this scope to see what's happening. 
Wow, we can clearly observe that our controller works in a saturation regime and this is not a good sign. We need to fix this. But before fi we fix this, let us plot the input to our saturation block. To do that, we will double click over here and we will click and we'll create a scope block. Connect the scope block to the input of the saturation and run the simulation once more. Double click over here. And you can clearly observe the input that's entering the saturation block. The input is a sinusoidal signal. However, this sinusoidal signal is trimmed by our saturation and as the result you obtain something like this. Here is one very important observation. Double click on the scope that shows the output of the saturation block and you can clearly observe here that the input is constant from 0 to 6 almost seconds. This means that during this time interval our closed loop system actually does not work as a closed loop system instead it's effectively an open loop system this is because this input over here is constant and you can clearly see that since the output of the system steadily increases until approximately six seconds and after that we have a period during which the system is not in the saturation anymore or better to say the controller is not in the saturation anymore and the output goes down. Before I explain you how to add the anti wind up filter and how to deal with this important limitation I will show you one trick. Let us say that we want to generate another simulation result by changing this constant over here. For example we can change this constant to 2, that is we want to simulate the step response when step input is equal to 2. Remember how our response looks. Ideally we want to plot on the same graph this response, that is the response obtained for the step input equal to 1 and the response of the system obtained for the step input equal to 2 and we want to obtain or actually better to say we want to plot two, two lines on the same graph. However, if we run the simulation once more, you will observe that the simulation results from the previous simulation run are erased. And this is not convenient if you want to add several lines on the same plot and if you want to include these plots in your scientific article or in your paper. To deal with this problem, I will show you one trick. The idea for solving this problem is to export the variables to workspace and I can do that by selecting this block to workspace. Simply, I will simply connect this block to the output of the system and let me erase this since this is not good and I will edit the properties of this block. The output name will be output here instead of time series I will select array and I will click on OK. Similarly you can do that for other variables that is for other series I will add another block, explain that block, connect this block to the output of the saturation and over here I will call the var variable output saturation. Click on OK. Similarly, let's add another block. This block will be connected to the part over here. Expand this block. And here, input, added this variable input saturation. Make sure over here that you select array. And make sure that over here we have selected array. OK. And that's it. Now go back to your MATLAB workspace and type whose. Here I will clear my previous output. 
type whose, now the workspace is empty, run the simulation and let's observe what's happening over here. If you type whose, you will obtain this variable out and if you type out, you will see that this is basically a data structure with this variable representing the time series of the output and let's repeat again. This is the output, this is the output of the saturation, this is the input of saturation. Let us plot, for example, our output. I can simply do that by typing out dot output and since you want to make a plot with respect to time I will simply type out dot t out this variable here is the discrete time press enter and observe the result this is the result and this is precisely the graph shown over here on the scope by using this trick you can export different simulation results obtained for different parameters and you can plot them on the same graph. In fact, I created a video about this. A video is given in the description below this video. For the clarity of this instructional video, I will erase these blocks. I will erase this block. I will erase this block. And I will erase this block. Next. I will add an anti-windup filter to deal with the problem of saturation. Over here, I need a gain. I will rotate this block by clicking on format and over here you can simply rotate the gain. Next, I will add the sum. I will rotate my sum block. I'll do it again. All the rotation doesn't matter. It's always a good idea to rotate the block. And over here, I will change the order of plus signs. Click on OK. From here, I will take the output and I will connect this output to this port. Over here, I will edit the sign, the sign will be minus, and I will connect to the minus port the output of my saturation. Then this block will be connected to the gain. This constant is a tuning parameter of your anti windup filter. I will not explain how to tune this constant, just for brevity, you can use trial and error, for example although there are more sophisticated methods to tune this constant. Then over here, I will add a sum. I will erase this part, add a sum over here. Next, we need to edit this sum. We'll change the sign to negative, since this port has to be a negative port. Next, we will connect the output of the gain to this negative port and we will simply connect the remaining ports. And we need to return the value of the step signal to 1. OK, let's double check everything. This is our saturation block, the output of the saturation block goes to the negative part, the input goes to the positive part, then we have a gain over here that we can change as we wish, then we have another sum and the output of this block is our error that's adjusted for this feedback signal. Let's run this simulation and let's observe the response. Here it is. Obviously the response looks much better. And over here, you can clearly see
the gain we obtained in, apply, in applying the anti windup filter. The red line is the output when, when there is no anti windup filter, and the blue line is the output when there is a, where there is the anti windup filter. We can clearly see that we obtained much better step response of the closed loop system. Then you can also observe the output of the saturation block. Uh -huh. We can see now that the system is still in saturation, however, for only 4 seconds. This is a good sign. Let us increase this gain to, for example, 2, and let's see what will happen. Run the simulation once more, and let's observe the response. The response looks even better. Let's check the saturation. The saturation is increased slightly. Let's run it again. Let's see the response. Then you can play with this constant further. Let's, for example, select 5. And let's see the response. Click on the output of the saturation. Click on the system output then you can for example decrease this constant you can for example put it to 0 0.1 and observe the output and you can see that the output is worse and the system in saturation for longer time Okay, that will be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.